Hello and good afternoon. My name is Bruno Calver and I'm a solution architect in the UK. I help our enterprise customers understand how they can use analytics to drive positive real world outcomes. We at Click are very pleased to be here in our 11th consecutive year, rated as a leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for BI platforms. Now with the undoubted commoditization of the BI and data viz market, my question as a customer would be, how is Click different? Now let me answer that head on. There are three important ways in which Click is unique. Firstly, our analytics power is not based on SQL that was built in the 1980s for transactional systems. Click was built from the ground up as an in-memory analytics engine. This provides a high performance user experience and the freedom to keep asking the next business question without going back to SQL developers for new views of the data or cube definitions. Secondly, Click has a fully web-based interface, which provides a modern consumer-grade user experience, centralized governance, and no clunky and hard-to-manage desktop software. This further helps drive user adoption and enables easy integration with customer web portals. In addition, our multi-cloud and open data approach means that our customers have choice and need not fear cloud lock-in. And finally, Click has a unique product vision that takes advantage of our associative engine to provide enhanced machine learning and augmented analytics capabilities. The bottom line here is that our software makes it easier for your business users to discover and act upon data insights, which is why we're the only leading vendor this year to move forward on vision. Because of our architecture, no hidden costs and the above three differentiators, we consistently deliver lower cost of ownership and faster time to value for our enterprise customers. Welcome to the Click Hub. This is where we can access and manage all of our user-facing content, as well as monitor charts, shop for data, find training materials, and more. One of my favorite things is to have a friendly chat with Click. Here I can pose natural language queries. I can ask complex questions like, compare total vaccinations to population by country. Click now produces a scatter plot, enabling me to make this comparison. Our natural language processing technology uniquely understands user context. So here, Click gives me the option to explore a more complex analysis based on my previous question, this time using k-means clustering, an advanced algorithm to group cohorts of countries together that have similar populations and vaccination rates. From here, I could click into my application to explore further. I now want to understand how different countries around the world are progressing with their vaccine rollout and how they've been impacted by the pandemic. Let's first focus on this geographic view, where we can see the US and the UK as the larger countries that have administered a high number of vaccines per 100 people. We can also see a number of Central African countries in grey that have not really started vaccinations, and this should be a consideration from a global equity perspective. Next, if we want to look for early signs that vaccination is having a positive impact on outcomes, we can use Click's home country of Sweden as an example. Sweden is currently seeing a third wave of cases but has vaccinated its most vulnerable citizens. And so you can now see that disconnect of new cases and deaths. We see similar trends in the Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland and France. Now, if we turn to the US, we can also maybe see those early signs of the vaccine impacting as cases start to rise. Looking more broadly at the US and the contextual KPIs at the top, you can see that the US only has 4.3% of the world population but has seen a disproportionate impact both positively in their testing and vaccination efforts, but sadly also in terms of cases and deaths. I now want to understand the pattern of the pandemic across different countries over time. For this, I'm going to use this animation, starting from week 40 of 2020. Here we can see Andorra surging ahead in terms of new case rates at this time, with Belgium also high, which was certainly a known issue in Europe. We can then see over the new year an unexplained drop in case rate as testing was still maintained over this period. We then see Israel's vaccination program accelerate quickly along with the UK and its overseas territories. And then the US sees a large and pronounced vaccine drive. This bar chart on the right shows the skewed distribution of vaccine administrations. Here you can see the top nine countries account for 80% of total vaccines administered, despite having less than 50% of the world population. As this is a global pandemic, we do need to look seriously at how we can ensure equity of access to the vaccines. Let's now look at how easy it is to build a dashboard like this in Click. 
we can drag and drop directly from field values, like population here, and automatically create a KPI object with the correct aggregation. Even better, if I used a pre-built set of master items, which contain agreed definitions of the dimensions and measures. I can drag these onto the sheet, for example total vaccinations per 100. And then I'm able to drag country on top of the object and it produces a map. Click automatically recognises that country is a geographic dimension. If I want to change the colour, I can simply click on the object and access this property panel on the right and adjust the colour accordingly. Next, I want to compare vaccination rates to case rates in different countries. I first drag on total cases per 100. Next, I want to then add dimension as a country. In this case again, we will get a map and I want to now additionally add vaccinations per 100. So here, Click is smart and has visualisation best practice built in and produces my favourite chart, a scatter plot, which is the best for one dimension and two measures. If I want to encode continent as colour, I can drag and drop another dimension onto the scatter plot, and in this case it produces a tree map, which is actually a great option for two dimensions and two measures. However, I love my scatter plot and Click respects my needs and offers me the option here of a good alternative. Finally, I also have the opportunity to use pre-built visualisations from the master items library. So over here I can see that I've got a line chart and this is looking at correlation of cases to the number of deaths over time. And then I'm also able to add other objects like this KPI object here. Once I'm done editing I can immediately start exploring. If I choose Asia for example you can see everything is by default wired together. No slicers, no linking sheets to dashboards, no performance headaches. This is just how it should be out of the gate. My next question is, are all the US states accelerating their vaccination program at the same rate and do any need help? Starting with our natural language search, I can ask a simple question like, rank daily vaccinations by state. In this view, we get a very simplistic understanding of vaccines administered by state. What we want to look at specifically is how states are accelerating their efforts over time. We can simply click here to get a month-on-month -month view. Even better, we can ask Click to build us a month-on-month -month analysis. Click has built this entire dashboard on the fly. We can set limits. In this case, let's say good is above 110% month-on-month and bad is below 105%. Here we can see that three states have missed this target. I can select these three states. And now you can see everything is automatically wired together again and I can pivot my analysis to these three states that may need assistance. We are then able to bring together all of our insights into a fully interactive storyboard. These storyboards can be a collection of snapshots or entire embedded sheets, not just bookmark dashboards. The Surgeon General could use these to auto-generate board packs, add narrative and interact with the data during meetings by going to source to get to a point of decision. Most importantly, they can have trust in the numbers and data they are working from, rather than what many call PowerPoint or ungoverned desktop data viz theatre, where people can hand curate the data to tell a specific story. In this case, the medical community can be confident they are all working for a single version of the truth, thanks to Click's centralised governance. I'm now going to look to do some analysis around various government responses. To find the relevant data, I'm going to start right here within our integrated data catalogue. Here I can easily search and filter data I have access to right within the ClickSense hub. If one is of interest, I can click through and see a range of metadata and view a profile of the data. Here I can assess the quality of the data by reviewing the data type, min and max, as well as a range of other field statistics. And I can also view a sample of the data. This looks like what I'm looking for, so I'm going to create a new app from this data file. And in two clicks I can go from reviewing the data to finding insights. Now this data set is the Oxford Government Response Tracker, which tracks policy responses around the world over time. Once the data has been brought to Click, it brings me to insights to start asking natural language questions. But often information is more valuable by combining a number of sources. Here I'm going to go into the Data Manager and add some additional data. This time some high level country measures that have come from various sources including the United Nations and the World Health Organization. To analyse across this data, we first need to create a model, and with query-based tools this can be a bit difficult for data that has varying levels of granularity, often resulting in data duplication or loss. Fortunately, Click's unique associative engine means I don't need to worry about these limitations. 
Here, augmented data prep capabilities suggest how these data sets should be associated, which I will accept. Next, I can use visual data preparation on this new data set. And here I can see Click has automatically detected fields as be either being geo information or date, or looking at this field, total deaths per thousand, I can see Click has classified this as a measure. Now I'd like to classify each of the countries based on this measure. And to do this, I'm going to create a bin or a bucket from this data. Let's say that all those that have less than the average death per thousand are considered low. The next bucket we'll call medium. And finally, we'll call these high. I can now tell Click to load this data and conduct my analysis. This is an app that I started to build out with this data. And I can now add that grouping I created to start to see how these various response measures have played out over time based on our different classification of countries. Stringency index is a measure that records the strictness of various lockdown style measures. We can see that towards the beginning of the pandemic, there wasn't a great deal of difference for this score. Looking at some specific restrictions like restriction on internal movement and stay at home requirements, we can see again that there's not really a great deal of difference at the start of the pandemic. But looking at international travel controls, we can see quite a different pattern. Countries that scored lower early on and more quickly reduced this measure seem to be those countries that we classified as having a high death rate per thousand. And so by using Click to prepare these differing data sets, I now have a powerful view to judge the effectiveness of various measures as they relate to COVID outcomes. I'm the Surgeon General and I've just received an alert about four states that have not met the threshold I've set for the state vaccination programmes without being logged into the system. If I'm able, I can link directly into the analysis. Let's look at how someone in the Surgeon General's team can create this alert. We need to ensure the Surgeon General is aware of when states are falling behind in the acceleration of the programme. I can just right click on an object and set an alert. I'll give my alert a name and then down here we can select the measure we want to monitor. Important to note here is that Click provides data driven alerts. We do not limit users to the objects. So the Surgeon General and the team can be confident they can alert on exactly what they need to manage the pandemic. I'm also able to set a dimension to cycle through, which in this case is state. And here you can see a preview of the values to ensure you're getting the expected outputs. Next, I set my conditions for the alert. I have a number of threshold options. In this case, I'm looking for states that fall below the target. I'm then able to set comparisons with a simple value, a complex calculation or expression, for even more advanced functions like standard deviation, so that the Surgeon General can be sure a variation is indeed statistically significant and requires action. In this case, we just need a simple alert for when states are not hitting our target 100% for the acceleration of the program. This is where we're able to set the frequency of the alert, which can include on every data refresh, so we can get up to the minute alerts on changes in the pandemic flowing into the system. It's at this point we get the chance to distribute these alerts to other users without them needing access to the system. In this example, let's assume my college colleague Matt is the Surgeon General. Click also provides the ability to subscribe to sheets or objects so they can be set via email in a WYSIWYG PDF format. These subscriptions can even inherit my selections so I can focus on areas of specific interest. I can simply right click and choose my option for receiving these static reports. This means that for scenarios such as this pandemic, we can be sure we're getting up to the minute information every time there's new data if required. In addition, you can see here that we can subscribe to entire sheets of information and also have those sent on a schedule. Finally, but importantly, Click has the capability to produce static reports in a variety of formats. In this example, a pixel perfect PDF report. And we're able to reuse all of the objects created in our dynamic dashboards, but structure and format them and have them scheduled and distributed via email or web channels. It's also possible for Click to output reports into PowerPoint, Word, Excel and HTML formats using a simple design editor at a small additional cost. Whilst Mode 1 reports are not glamorous, they're often an essential capability. And in this case, Click enables the Surgeon General to get meaningful alerts when needed, along with a fully formatted professional report to back up policy actions with evidence and confidently make data driven decisions. At Click, we see the paradigm is well and truly shifting to a new era of BI. Today, I'm excited to share with you two capabilities from our roadmap that will further support the move towards what we call active intelligence. The first around fostering greater collaboration and the second, the ability to take action in the moment. Here, I'm inside the ClickSense hub. I've just received a notification that a colleague has mentioned me in their note. 
Collaborative Notes will play a crucial role in assisting users throughout their decision making process. Here I can see that Barb has started to create a note and I can review her thoughts and insights. It looks like she's noticed a surge of cases. I can also see that she has tagged me here which is what triggered the notification. And I can go from one of her snapshots straight into my own analysis. Now if we look at Barb's screen we can see that she is continuing to conduct her analysis pointing out some counties with the highest three-day growth rate. If we go back to my screen, I can see her continuing to capture these insights within the note in real time. This real-time collaborative editing experience is truly unique in this space. and I'm going to share my own insights right back to Barb, along with anyone else who has been invited to collaborate on this note. Here I'm going to look at which counties have a much higher population of over 65s based on CDC vulnerability data and view a list of related nursing home facilities. I'm going to suggest to Barb that we target these facilities to ensure that they have the latest infection prevention guidelines and access to key support resources. Now, instead of exporting this data out or going into another system, I can trigger immediate actions that are outside of the analytics right from this insight. By clicking this MailChimp automation, I can trigger a workflow that creates a brand new MailChimp email campaign and adds the contacts from those facilities that we just identified. Now these new actions and workflows are possible through new automation capabilities that are integrated right into the Click platform. Here in the ClickSense hub, we see a brand new automations type where I can see automations that I have access to that can either be manually run, scheduled or triggered by an event. Here I can create a new automation. and I can then work with this visual drag and drop workflow builder to easily combine blocks of actions and data sources. This is how I was able to create my MailChimp automation. Here I'm creating a loop to cycle through each nursing home and adding them as a new recipient inside a MailChimp campaign. People within the organisation are now able to use this automation anytime they wish to perform this action. So with Click, you saw that two or more users were able to collaborate on their insights, make a decision based on their collective findings, and right from there trigger a business process automation, allowing them to quickly take informed action. We hope that you're excited about these new innovations on the horizon to help you move from passive to active BI. You can learn more at click.com forward slash roadmap.